What's up guys, I'm here and this is my live YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you 10 Python tricks that will improve your code significantly. Stay tuned. All right, so let's start with number one. Okay, so as you can see here, let's comment this. As you can see here, we added the enumerate and passed the list. This makes the enumerate returns an index along with the item. So now, if, if let's say I want to check if index, we can say if index equals, for example, in this example, let's say two, then we can say line added or whatever, and run the code. As you can see here, we've got zero, one, okay, as you can see here, zero A, one B, line added, because the index is two, then we got, 2c d 3 okay 3d etc here we are with number two you can use an else statement with the for loop how so for example let's say sometimes okay this is a bit advanced but in generators okay which is basically similar to uh, lists but it generates things uh, as you go you can't check if things exist in it in uh, in the generator you have to iterate through the through every item in the generator so you would have to use this else statement to check or to run another code if the item wasn't found in the generator of course this is a bit uh, ridiculous example because you can accomplish this same uh, result using the n so we can say just if apple in fruits then print apple is in fruits else print didn't find apple in fruits and this basically replaces this one thing but the idea is so if i run this c didn't find an uh didn't find apple in fruits but if i took this copy it paste it here saved and run it again apple is in fruit okay hope that helps and let's jump into number three so here we are with number three so number three is prompt with input function so instead let's say you want to take some input from the user instead of using print statement okay then using the input to capture the variable you can just pass whatever string you want to print inside the input uh, function so it would look something like this but since I have that formatter, it would, uh, when I save, it would format it like so. So now if we run this, so if I said output, output, then the second line executes, which are our new way. If I said output, hi, hi output. Okay, so it's basically the same, okay? It's just instead of printing, then capturing, you print the same function you capture the variable in okay so let's jump in to number four here we are with number four sorting lists so you've probably seen some code like this if you have watched some of my hacker rank videos we have this random list of random numbers okay so you can see we have 12 which is here we have 21 so we want it to be in order so once you call the sort method it changes the list and makes it in order so as you would see as i run the code right now so as you can see the list is 12 21 33 41 50 35 53 uh, and so on and so on so now it's in order all right so let's jump into number five number five this is a very neat function in python so instead of uh, let's say you have a float okay and you uh, are also known as decimal number so and you don't want to screw it and just convert it to integer so let me show you so as you can see this number okay it's 3.141 etc now if if i use the round function let me first show you how it works so if we run this first thing you notice that rounding that number it rounds it to integer which is the closest number the other thing is you can pass how many places you want of that float or decimal number so it would 
uh, pass it for you in the number so it would stay as float as you can see here float but instead of having this full uh, places I could I don't know 10 places you just get three or how many you want four or five just uh, as you wish now what's diff what's the difference between this and using uh, or converting the number to integer so now if I run this as you notice that the first one generated results in an integer 9 and the round results in integer 10. Now why is that? Because the integer method or the integer function removes just removes this. Okay, it doesn't care. It just removes anything after the dot and just keeps this and stores it as an integer. With round, it basically goes to the closest number is either up or down. Okay, so that's it for number five. Let's jump into number six. And here we are with number six. The idea of this trick is if you want to check if all values in the list are valid or true values, you can just pass all and it would tell you if, if this list is indeed has all true values. Another thing you can check is if any value in this list has a true value. Now, if I would run this, you would notice that we have false and true. So false because not all items in this list are true. And as you can see here, values that are returned false and anything of any of those, which as you can see, we are using here, empty list zero and an empty string, those returns as false. So when we check are all items in this list are true, it returns no, it's not, that's not true. When we ask are there any value in this list that is true, it says yeah, true. Now what good does this make? Now let's say you take, you take a list from a user, you can just check if any and pass that list to so the data and let's say it's empty and we pass data, if any then print there is some data else there is no data now if i comment if this saved and run it again there is no data because the list is empty but let's say the user passed some data uh hello run it again it would say there is indeed some data okay so yeah that's it for number six back again with number seven so number seven is the filter function and just pass that bool uh, function now this filter function would call this pool function on every item on this list and so to check does this returns true or false if it returns false it will get removed and so on and so on so if it returns true it will stay if it returns false it will be removed and then all of that will be stored in this filtered values and since this filter returns a filter object we need to convert it to list back again. So we convert it to list and then print it. See how it looks. And as you can see, okay, so we got rid of all those empty data with only three lines. Let's move on to the next one. And number eight, unpack lists. Let me run the code just to show you. So as you can see, we have the lion, the zebra, and the monkey, okay? Now this is the normal way when you print lists. Whenever you print lists, you get this result. Now you can unpack every item on any list and store its own variable by just passing uh, variables equals the list you want to unpack. But make sure to that the amount of variables matches the amount of items in this list otherwise you will get a value error okay what value error will be raised now as you can see here after we unpacked it we got lion in its own variable and then zebra and then the monkey now the other neat thing is you can just pa pass this uh what you call it it's the multiplication sign with the list and it just do this all right, so number nine, counting items. I could just pass the item I want to count through the method count in any list. So as you can see here, I can count how many ones, if I run this, 
I can count how many sevens, let's say. You see, there's only one seven. I could add here another three. Okay, and count how many threes. Threes. Yeah, there's two threes. You see, it's amazing. And you also, you can check with this, you can check if there's duplicates. So you could say, for example, if ls dot count, let's say one, more than one, that means there's more than one copy, then print duplicates. I'll run this now. You see, duplicates detected, detected because there is indeed one more than one one in this list so yep let's jump in to number 10 all right so number 10 you can see that it's uh, it did source the company names based on the alpha alphabetical order because it started apple okay google then microsoft when it's microsoft second and in the numbers, it's uh, since we passed reverse true, it re it sorted them in the descending order, and in the while lab, okay, it sorted the letters, as you can see here, in the alphabetical order. Now, what's great about this method, uh, instead of the previous method, which is using the sort that we discussed, which is like this, now that those lists are still the same now if i would print brands they haven't been changed okay they haven't been changed because this sorted uh function does not change the list but instead returns another copy let's see so as you can see here we got that this is the altered copy of the list of numbers this is the original one, it's still the same. Uh, this is the company or the brand, the altered copy. This is the original one. This is while lab uh, in ordered. Ordered, okay, this is the altered one. And this is the original one. So, because you stayed till the end, I have two more tricks for you. Let's check them out. So, let's see this awesome trick. If you have a list and you have duplicates, what should you do? Let me show you. Let's say we have this numbers. Do we have one, 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 two, three? Okay, whatever numbers, nine, okay, 79. All right, so this is a list with duplicates. I want to get rid of all duplicates. You could just do it with one simple function. Now, this is, instead of like iterating or doing whatever, you can just pass this uh, numbers through a set now a set is another data type in python but what's cool about it 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 does not accept duplicates okay so when you pass any list through this set so when set changes the list to be a set data type it removes all duplicates as you can see here don't need this in okay so if i save now and we run number 11 as you can see, all duplicates removed. Now, here's the thing. Now it's a set data type because as you can see those uh, curly braces. So I can just then change it back to list and it would be a normal list back again. So just calling two functions and all your duplicates removed. Very neat, right? So one more trick for you guys, because you stick around. This is useful for uh, debugging because let me show you. Okay, so what you can do is pass an I for interactivity. If I passed an I over here after the Python keyword, here is a cool trick. Now it has, now as you can see, this three, uh, uh, so th this, shell sign okay uh, means that i'm now in a shell but not any shell this shell have executed any code in the in the file i have ran okay and now i can just play with it so now if i print letters as you can see i got a b c d sorted yeah because even if i for example 
move the C to here and saved and recorded this. Oops. Now, as you can see, I'm going to run it again. So if I printed letters, as you can see, they are sorted because it has already executed this code. And now I can do whatever I want. So I can say, uh, write letters equals sorted reverse true letters. Uh, for this keyword argument, reverse. Ah, oh, okay. So letters should be here. Now, if I printed letters, it would be in reverse. So, yep. Yeah. That's it guys for this video. Hope you've enjoyed and make sure to check the link in the description for that 100 Python trick package. So make sure to check the link in the description. Also make sure to drop the, in the comment section which is your favorite trick and you feel that you are going to use the most from now on. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and peace out.